Welcome back to Basic Revenue Management, uh, GM's class part 2. Uh, I realized that it is not very easy uh, to follow the calculation of the actual uh, exercise of revenue management practice. So uh, I am making a new recording uh, using the uh, screen recorder. So hopefully, uh, by showing you the actual calculation on the Excel sheet, it's easier for you to understand uh, the some uh, process of the calculations. If you are ready, we will start. So now, uh, let's assume that you are a revenue manager uh, working at a hotel. And then I will introduce to you uh, some actual scenarios uh, which we encounter on a daily basis as a revenue manager. So uh, it will include how to calculate the group rates, the OTA, online travel agency promotions, uh, displacement analysis, as well as uh, the corporate rates. So, if you are ready, let's go. Corporate pricing exercise. So, if you are a city hotel located in the central city, you have a lot of key accounts who produce a lot of room nights on a yearly basis. And sometimes your clients will come and ask for the, uh, some discount, uh, saying that uh, their contribution is very high uh, to the hotel. Here's the uh, scenario. This year, one of your corporate clients has booked 13 rooms per day on the 250 business days. That is exclusive of the weekends and also some uh, holidays like Christmas and New Year's and so on. This client has a special rate of 110 euro per room. Uh, your uh, rec rate is 115. You usually sell 115 to the public. For next year, he requests a further discount of 15 euro, which means from 110, they are trying to reduce the rate to 95 euro per room. If you refuse, he will no longer book a room in your hotel. On the opposite, if you accept, he promises you to buy many more rooms. The question is, how many extra rooms will this client have to book? next year in order to generate the same profit as this year. It's not revenue, it's a profit. Note, the cost of cleaning for a room is 30 euro. Okay, so apparently this account is very important for the hotel because they give the hotel 13 rooms per day for the entire year, 250 business days out of 365 days. And they have a special rate already, which is 110. I would say the, uh, the rate is very high, considering that hotel usually sell 115 to the public. So they know that the rate is still very high. So they are asking for further discount by 15 euro and asking to reduce the price to 95 euro per room. Considering the cost of the cleaning one room is 30 euro, what would be the extra room nights you need in order to uh, secure the same level of profit as this year for the next year. Okay, uh, I have prepared some template here so that your calculation gets easier. So please uh, try to fill the form by answering existing profit per room and what is the new profit per room if we change the price and existing contribution, existing profit for the year and the new uh, contribution, so new profit what is the variance, and then extra room to get the same profit next year. So just as a reminder, they contribute 13 rooms per day, and business day of the year is 250. So total room nights they are giving us at the moment is 3,250. 13 times 250 equals 3,250. The cost to clean one room, variable cost, is 30 euro per room. Okay, so please pause the video and try to calculate uh, to get your own answer and then you can keep watching after you get the answer. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Let's uh, do some calculation together to see if your answer uh, is correct. Uh, we need to calculate the existing profit per room. At the moment, what was the, the price? Uh, we have 110. Uh, per room and then cost is 30 so which means existing profit per room is 100 
10 minus 30 euro. So currently, uh, we are generating 80 euro as a profit per loom. New profit per loom, if we give discount by 15 euro, new price becomes 95. So new profit will be 95 minus cost stays same, which is 30 euro. So 30. Which means when we accept the new price, uh, new profit per loom they contribute will be 65 euro per loom. Let's calculate what is the existing profit the account is giving us. Currently, profit per loom is 80 times they book 13 looms per day times they give us 13 looms for 250 days per year. Total profit they are giving us per year is 260,000 euro at the moment. If we accept the new price, what would be the new profit per year? Let's see. That is 65 euro per loom times 13 looms per day times 250 business day. So we can see that the profit will reduce dramatically from 260,000 to 211,250 if the loom night production stays as 13 looms per day. So now we can calculate a variance in case the loom night is the same. 260,000 minus 211,250 equals 48,750. So which means this variance has to be recovered by the volume. So how many room nights they will produce more in order to compensate this loss in terms of the profit. What we need to do is how many room nights we need more to get 48,750 divided by a new price a minus cost that is 65 euro. 65 euro is the profit generated per loom with a new price. So if we divide it, we can calculate what would be the minimum loom nights we require in order for us to produce exactly the same level of profit as previous year. I hope you got the uh, correct answer. If you didn't, don't worry, you can uh, go back and replay and then uh, do the calculation again until you have a full understanding. Let's move on to the next question. Next scenario is about group bookings. Today in your 200 room hotel, there are 50 rooms left to sell. So you have a 200 rooms in your hotel and then 150 rooms already sold, which means you have a 50 to sell. Airport is closed and you have just received phone calls from two different air charter operators asking for emergency accommodation. One request is for 100 packs, half board accommodation at the price of 110 euro, all inclusive. The other one is for 80 packs only, and this 80 packs requires bed and breakfast accommodation at the price of 105 euro. One request would secure you with a perfect fear, but will it produce optimal Yield. Which option are you going to opt for and why? Just uh, additional information here, you do not expect any more individual arrivals. No, there will be no walk-ins and there will be no last-minute reservation for tonight. So uh, only business you are going to get for tonight will be these two charters, Charter A and Charter B. To summarize what they uh, require, uh, Charter A requires 50 rooms for tonight and then they have 100 packs of guests and they are willing to pay 110 euro. Charter B requires 40 rooms only and they have 80 packs guests and then the price they are willing to pay is 105. Only difference between these two is Charter A requires half board which means the price 110 includes dinner. On the other hand, Charter B uh, is looking for only bed and breakfast. So that's why their budget is slightly lower than Charter A.
So here's the template you can utilize to get the answer. So please calculate using the numbers given to you. What would be the total revenue? What is the room cost, breakfast cost, dinner cost? And you can calculate what would be the profit coming from chapter A if we accept it. And you can do the same for chapter B and then we can compare the profit to make a decision which charter business we are going to accept to make a maximum level of profit for tonight. Good luck. Great. So welcome back. I hope you found the answer correctly. Let's check it out together to see what would be the correct answer. Chapter A uh, first. We, let's calculate the total revenue. Total revenue equals they have a, a 50 room requested. So 50 rooms times how much they are willing to pay? 110 euro. So total revenue they are giving us 5,500. Room cost equals how many rooms? 50 rooms times what is the cost per room? Cost per room is 15 euro. So 750 euro will be spent. Uh, for the uh, variable cost related to room. Breakfast cost. Breakfast cost is here 2 euro per pack times how many packs? They have uh, 100 packs. 200 euro will be spent for the breakfast. Dinner cost okay. equals dinner cost per pack is 6 euro times how many packs? 100. Therefore, the contribution to the profit from Charter A will be total revenue minus room cost minus breakfast cost minus dinner cost. And we can see that total profit we are going to get if we accept Charter A stays at 3950 Let's move on to Charter B. Total revenue we can expect from Charter B is 40 rooms times 105 euro per room. So total revenue is slightly lower comparing to Charter A 5,500, Charter B 4,200. Room cost equals 15 euro per room times 40 rooms. So of course, the cost is reduced comparing to Charter A because 10 rooms are less. So room cost 750 for Charter A, 600 for Charter B. Breakfast cost also reduced because 2 euro per person times we have only 80 packs instead of 100. So 160 euro. Is there any dinner cost? No, because ta Charter B we cast it for bed and breakfast, which means dinner is not included. So it comes zero cost. If we want to calculate the profit coming from Charter B, that equals total revenue minus room cost minus breakfast cost minus dinner cost, which is zero, equals 3,440. It means by taking Charter A, we can generate 510 euro more than Charter B. So as a revenue manager, when you have uh, these two inquiries coming to you um, from based on this calculation, you can make your decision very easily to accept Charter A rather than Charter B. Hopefully, all of you got the answer correctly. If you are ready, let's go on to the next one. Next one is related to online travel agency promotion. So this is also a very common situation. As a revenue manager, sometimes you need extra room nights and you are aware that you will not have a lot of groups during the season and then you, you are likely to focus on online travel agency. So situation says you want to increase your room revenue for the month of June. One Online travel agency proposes to you to launch a special offer at RA1 minus 25%. So which means public rate minus 25%. They are confident that they can double their sales, 3,000 room nights at public rate minus 25% instead of 1,500 room nights at public rate minus 15%. You think that in that case, 
it would cannibalize your direct sales and you would sell 1,000 rooms less. So usually public direct room nights give you 8,500, but it will be reduced to 7,500 because of this promotion from OTA. And direct individual segment has a higher room rate, which is 150 euro. So if you accept, what will be the impact on contribution? So here you have a proposal from one of the online travel agency who usually give you 1,500 room nights. So quite a big account. And they are saying, please give us a special uh, discount. Usual discount is 15%. Instead of 15%, please give us 25% discount and then we promise that you will have 3,000 room nights instead of 1,500. But you are also expecting to have a loss if you accept this promotion because you have a direct sales which gives you usually 8,500 room nights and that will be um, reduced to 7,500. So minus 1,000 room nights from direct sales. And direct sales, of course, has a higher uh, contribution, 150. What would be your decision? Are you going to accept this promotion offer or are you going to just pass it? Let's see what uh, would be the correct answer. So in order for you to uh, make a right decision, I have given you some template again. So summary of the uh, situation, you usually sell 150 euro for the direct channel and then this OTA, this specific OPA, you usually give 15% discount, which means you will get 127.5 in you know, usual cases. Okay? Now, they are asking for special uh, promotion, which is 25% discount instead of 15%, which means the rate from OTA will be reduced from 127.5 to 112.5. You have a, a variable cost to clean one room, which is 15 euro per room. So considering this uh, condition, what would be the impact if you accept the proposal from the OTA? Please uh, stop, please uh, pause the video and make your own calculation and uh, we will review uh, your calculation together. Good luck. Thank you. Welcome back. Hopefully uh, you made the right calculation. So let's check it out if your calculation is correct. Now we have a, a current forecast and we have a, another forecast with a special promotion. Let's calculate what would be the um, numbers uh, produced with the two different scenario. First one is without a promotion. Direct booking room night. What is the room night usually? 8,500. 8,500 from direct booking. Online travel agency room night, in usual cases, usually 1,500, 1,500. So total room nights you are expecting to get from direct booking plus online travel agent equals 8,500 plus 1,500. 10,000 room nights. Let's assume that this is only channel we are working okay, to, to make the calculation easy. We do not consider other channels. Now, we need to calculate what would be the situation with a special promotion with OTA. If we accept this proposal from OTA, your direct booking room night will reduce from 8,500 to 7,500. 7,500. And your OTA room night will increase from 1,500 to 3,000. Now your total room night will increase 7,500 plus 3,000. So we can easily see that your room night sold has increased by 5% thanks to the promotion. But the issue is, are we going to increase only occupancy or our profit as well? So that would be the question. Let's calculate the revenue. Direct booking revenue equals 8,500 room nights usually times what is the rate for direct booking? 150 euro. What is the OTA revenue in the normal circumstances? Usually we have 1,500 room nights from OTA times usual rate from OTA is only 15% discount which is 1 to 7.5. 
total room cost. Room cost is 15 euro per room times how many rooms we are selling? One ten thousand usual cases. Now we can calculate room profit total contribution equals total room revenue from direct channel plus total room revenue from OTA minus total room cost of two channels equals 1,316,250 euro. This is the profit we are supposed to generate if we do not have this promotion proposed by OTA. Now, what's going to happen if we accept the proposal from the OTA and have a second situation? So direct booking revenue will reduce because we are going to have 1,000 less room night from direct booking times uh, the rate from direct booking is 150 euro. Now, OTA revenue will increase because we are going to have a 3,000 room nights instead of 1,500. So, 3,000 times what would be the rate from OTA? We have a special promotion, 25% discount, so it will be 112.5. So, we can see that OTA revenue has increased dramatically from 191250 to 337,500. Total room cost will also increase because we are selling 500 more room night. So, uh, total room cost equals 15 euro times 10,500. What would be the total room profit? Equals direct room revenue plus OTA room revenue minus total room cost. That will come at 1,305,000 euro. So which one is bigger? Yes. The first scenario without OTA promotion will give us more profit, bottom line, comparing to the second situation with OTA promotion. How much is the difference? The difference is 11,250 euro. So we can see from uh, this exercise that sometimes promotions will make us have less profit on the bottom. So it's very important for the revenue managers and sales director to realize that increasing the revenue is not always guaranteeing better a profit level. So on this occasion, it's better as a revenue manager to refuse the proposal from OTA and just stick to the original situation, which will give us much more a profit, which is 11,250 euros. Hopefully it's clear. If yes, let's move on to the next situation. You remember during the, the part one, there was a quiz asking for yes or no. The price for a big group should be cheaper than small groups. Is it true or false? If the group has a bigger size, we are supposed to offer cheaper lay than small groups. Is it true? Let's find out the answer together. Here's the situation. You are a hotel with 100 rooms. And this specific date, which is 11th of September, you have a current forecast. Let's say this forecast is uh, one week prior to arrival date or two weeks prior to arrival date. So you are expecting to finish 11th of September, this specific date, at the occupancy of 80%, okay? which means you will end up having 20 rooms empty and your ADR is 100 US dollar with this 80% forecast. So revenue forecast for the day is easy because you have 80% occupancy which means uh, 100 rooms, 80% which means 80 rooms. So 80 rooms times average rate of 100 US dollar equals 8,000 US dollar. That is our current revenue forecast. However, we have a very strong sales team and this sales team has brought two new inquiries at the last minute. We have a two inquiry. First one is group one, 20 rooms. Group two, we have a 40 rooms and they have a same budget per room. They are willing to pay 80 US dollar per room. So in this situation, the question is very simple. As a revenue manager, are you going to accept group one 
or group 2. Benefit for group 1 is your focus is 80%, which means if you take 20 rooms, it's perfectly matching. So you have 100% very safely, and there is no displacement. There is no business you need to give up. So that is perfectly matching with your current forecast. The benefit from group 2 is you have a 40 room, which is bigger than 20 rooms to be empty. So which means by taking this group, it's guaranteed that you will be full. It's very easy to make your hotel full. But the problem is by taking group 2, you might need to refuse 20 room bookings at the last minute because your forecast is at the moment 80%. So 80 rooms plus 40 is 120 rooms. And physically, you cannot take all the business, so you will have to refuse 20 rooms at the last minute. So with this scenario, can you try to find out which group is more profitable? So please pause the video and try to figure out uh, what would be the right answer on this occasion. Welcome back. Let's see it together. Here's the answer. Group 1 has 20 rooms. Group 2 has 40 rooms. So like I said, group 1, you will not have any displacement, which means perfectly matching with the size of your capacity. So updated forecast will be 100%. On the other hand, group 2 has 40 rooms. Therefore, even though the updated forecast is 100%, same as group 1, you will have to displace 20 rooms at the end of the period. So let's calculate what would be the revenue change. If you take group 1, there's a 80 rooms you can still take. Initial forecast was 80%, right? So this 80 rooms still stay without any changes. So you still have 80 rooms from original forecast, which was giving you ADR of 100. Okay? You don't lose anything from here, from original forecast. Plus, you have additional business, which is 20 rooms from group 1. So 20 rooms additional times these 20 rooms will give you the average rate of 80 US dollar. So therefore, you have a original revenue plus new revenue coming from group 1, which is 1600. So equals 9600. It will be your new revenue forecast. On the other hand, if you decide to take group 2, you have displacement, which is around 20 rooms. Therefore, you will not be able to take all of the 80 rooms initially projected from original forecast. So you will be able to take only 60 rooms out of this forecast. Therefore, the number of rooms is reduced to 60 from 80, and that is giving you the average rate of 100. Plus, you have this new business which has 40 rooms, so 40 rooms times the rate is still 80 US dollar, same as group 1. If we calculate the new revenue forecast based on the group 2 situation, we have 6,000 from the original forecast because we cannot take all of the 80, we can take only 60, plus additional revenue from group which has 40 rooms, 40 times 80 which is 3,200. Therefore, total revenue forecast is 9,200. So we can see from this calculation that group 1 will give us better revenue than group 2. And in this occasion, room variable cost is exactly the same, right? Because we are 100% in both cases. So profit will be also high in group 1. Therefore, we can easily say that group 1 is more profitable business comparing to group 2. If we want to still take group 2, we have to ask them to pay more instead of 80. So how do we calculate it? We calculate the difference between group 1 and group 2. The difference in terms of revenue is 9,600 minus 9,200, which is 400 US dollar. And the size of the group 2 is 40 rooms. For, therefore, 400 divided by 40 rooms equals 10 US dollar. So if group 2 is willing to pay 10 US dollar more per room, it will be okay to take group 2 as well. 
So that means if we want to take the group 2 out of these two options, the group 2 has to pay 90 US dollars instead of 80 US dollars per room. Hopefully it's clear now. Thank you. Let's move on to the next exercise. Now is our time to talk about displacement analysis. First thing to remember is displacement analysis is only to be done when a displacement is expected by taking a new booking. To make it easy to understand, you can just remember like this. Displacement happens when current forecast plus new booking inquiry is bigger than the capacity. Let's say current forecast is 80%, new booking inquiry is both giving us 40% occupancy, which means if we add up current occupancy 80 plus new booking inquiry 40, it becomes 120%. And physically, it's impossible to take 120% occupancy. That's why we have to give up 20% of the business, which is called displacement. So when we have to give up the uh, certain portion of business, we need to run displacement analysis. The reason I put only here is in case there's no displacement, it's better to take all the business in. It doesn't matter what kind of budget the client has, as long as this group is profitable, which means the, the price proposed by the client is higher than variable cost, there's nothing to lose because anyway, we will not be full. Anyway, we will not give up any business because of this group. So displacement analysis is not required. It is not necessary. We need to just take the business in order for us to maximize our occupancy because we will not be full anyway. Now, let's run some displacement analysis exercise. Here's the situation. Ibushita, the senior sales manager from Novis Bogor, has received an in event inquiry for a large training session for a major consulting company. Novis Bogor is a 300-room luxury hotel in Indonesia with an average rate of so 250. Uh, their average occupancy is 80% with peak periods occupying on weekends and from October through May. The group would like rooms for 15 rooms starting on 7th of January 2009. January is usually busy month for the hotel and Ivo Petra, our DOSD, is concerned that the group might displace higher paying business, especially since they will be staying over two weekends. The group would like five rooms on 7th and 8th of January, and then the number of the room goes up to 90 rooms only for the 9th of January, and then from 10th of January, they require 200 rooms per day from 10th of January until 21st of January, and all the rooms will be occupied by one person only. If Stella, our lovely revenue manager, has not done the forecast for January yet, so if Petra is very upset and she has decided to use the number of the rooms sold in the previous year, same time, as the forecast for January 2009. Most of the rooms and lobbies for goal are switch, and the company plans on um, having many of their training sessions in the switch. So they will not need to rent any function space except for meals. According to Ibu Shita, the group will purchase eight lunches and they are willing to pay 30 US dollar per person. And they will also buy three dinners, uh, which gives us 50 US dollar per person. Novis Bogor, like most hotels, has a different contribution margins for different departments. The contribution margin for room is 80%, okay. cost is only 20%. While the food and beverage is 30%, which means the uh, cost from FMB is 70%. This group has indicated that they will pay no more than 180 per night. So maximum budget they are giving us is 180 US dollar. Should if Stella say yes to take this group? So in summary, we have a 300 rooms. We are luxury hotel, average rate 250. The group would like 15 room nights, so it's a long stay group, 
And then first two days, 7th of January and 8th of January, they require five rooms. Uh, only for the 9th of January, they need 90 rooms. And from 10th of January until departure, 21st of January, they need 200 rooms. And all of the rooms will be occupied by one person, which means total number of the packs is 200 packs. So you can utilize that number for lunch and dinner calculation. They will not require any function space, so there's no room rental, but they will buy eight lunches at the price of 30 per person, and they also buy three dinners, which is 50 US dollar per person. Contribution margin per room is 80, and FMB 30. So now, knowing that they are willing to pay only up to 180 US dollar per night, are we going to take this business? or say no. Please pause the video and try to figure it out yourself. Yes, I understand this is quite complicated situation, but please try to sort it out yourself and then you can continue to watch to see how we can run displacement analysis for the case like this. Good luck. Welcome back. So if we are ready, let's see how we can do displacement analysis for the case like this. Total number of the rooms of the hotel is 300. Our ADR is 250. And we know that room margin was 80%, FMB margin was 30%, which means we can calculate our variable cost per room equals our average rate 250 times 0.2, 20%. So we can see in order for us to clean one room, we need to spend 50 US dollar per room, 20% cost. Room contribution per room is our average rate, 250 minus 50 US dollar. So every time we sell one room, our profit generated from one room is 200 US dollar. Average rate, one, 250, variable cost, 20%, which is 50. And then our room profit per room is 200. Hopefully, you are clear up to here. Next one, let's talk about the scenario itself. So, we need to calculate if there is any revenue and profit contribution coming from this group inquiry. Is there any room rental? No. So, revenue is zero. Nothing. FMB, yes, there is a uh, FMB contribution. We have uh, eight lunches at the price of 30. And we have uh, three dinners at the price of 50 US dollar. So we can easily calculate the, our uh, revenue contributed by these eight lunches and three dinners. So calculation is equals eight lunch times 30 US dollar times total number of the packs is 200. So 48,000 US dollar is expected from lunch revenue. Dinner revenue equals how many dinner? Three dinner times what's the price? 50 times how many packs? 200. So dinner revenue expected is 30,000 US dollar. So from FMB, what we can expect is 48,000 plus 30,000, 78,000 US dollar will be contributed from FMB revenue. So it equals 78,000. What is the margin? Room margin was 80%, FMB margin was 30%. So knowing that margin is 30%, the profit we can generate from FMB revenue is only 30% of 78,000. So 23,400 will be produced as a profit from FMB side. There's no audio visual. So total order profit given by the group is 23,400. Now let's calculate what would be the uh, number of rooms we need to displace in order to accommodate this group. So the guests will be checking in on the 7th and then first two days, they do not need the whole rooms. They need from 7th and 8th of January, they need only five rooms. So you put five rooms, five rooms. On this cell, we have a forecast per day, and that is coming from last year's record, right? 
because our revenue manager didn't finish the forecast for a day yet for the January. So what we are doing is we chose the same period of last year. So same Monday, same Tuesday, same Wednesday, and so on. So that we can forecast what would be the rough number of the room night sold from same period uh, from previous year. And then we just add up what would be the new forecast by taking this big group. Third day, which is 9th of January. 9th of January, we can see that they need 90 rooms for the 9th of January. So 90 rooms. From 10th of January until 22nd, they need how many rooms? 200 rooms. Okay. 200 rooms. We need to copy and paste. So from this calculation, we can see that total alumni generated by group is 2,500. And here, on the, the column E, we are indicating how many room nights will be possibly displaced just because we are taking this big group. You can see that on the 7th of January and the 12th of January, there will be no displacement because our forecast is very, very low. However, we have uh, the other days, all the days throughout the stay, we need to give up some we need to refuse some bookings coming at the last minute if we take this big group so total room nights displaced will be 1583 room nights so we take 2500 and we will lose 1583 room nights so let's see then what would be the uh, the minimum rate we need to charge to make sure that we are not losing any profit by taking this big group. Rate calculation for rooms displaced. Okay, how many rooms displaced? We know it's 1,583. Contribution per room. Yes, we already calculated. Each room will give us $200 as a profit. Displaced contribution. So which means we have to give up 1,000 583 room nights because of this group and then each room was supposed to give us the profit of 200 so which means by taking this group the profit we are losing is $316,600 so this is the amount of money we need to recover from the group so now before we calculate the room side we or know that we have a some profit given to us as an additional profit, which is here, 23,400. So this 23,400 has to be taken into account. So now, total contribution we need to recover is not 316,600. It will be 316,600 minus the contribution given by FMB. Because FMB is already given us 23,400. So now we just need to recover from the group room profit $293,200. What is the number of the group rooms? 2,500. So maximum contribution per room. What would be the contribution we require to recover this damage? So we can calculate times equals 293,200 divided by total number of the group rooms, which is 117.28 US dollar. So if we can obtain 117.28 US dollar per room as a profit from 2,500 room nights, we will be able to generate same level of profit, which will be given to us without the group. What is the variable cost per room? Which is here, 50. So now we can see that we need to charge at least 117.28, which is a minimum profit per room, plus our variable cost per room, which was 50. So it will make sense to take this group if their price is more than 168, 169, 170. So let's go back to the scenario. It says, the, this group has indicated that 
they will pay no more than 180 per night. They said they are willing to pay 180. So, which means 180 is higher than 167. So, we can still generate decent amount of profit by taking this group. So, as a revenue manager, your decision for this scenario will be yes, please go ahead and then take this business at the price of 180. Is everything clear? Hopefully, uh, you didn't find it too challenging, but in case you get stuck uh, with the calculations, don't worry because this is a new area and you should be able to understand when you watch it second time and third time. So please rewind the video and then you watch second time, third time, and you should be able to uh, make a, a better understanding uh, by watching it repeatedly. That's all I have prepared uh, to close the section of basic revenue management. The exercises, we have gone through five different uh, scenarios, including OTA promotions and group rates, display analysis, corporate rate analysis, and so on. Uh, these are the basic situations which we encounter on a daily basis as a revenue manager. So you can see what kind of work our revenue managers are dealing with um, uh, in her or his uh, daily life. So hopefully you found the uh, uh, contents interesting enough and some of you uh, might want to dig more and try to pursue your career into revenue world. I hope uh, that is the case for you. So once again, thank you very much for joining uh, the GMG class for basic revenue management. I hope to see you again for the next week. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.